Ex-prisoners, what was the scariest thing you've seen in prison? I had this friend I hung out with all the time when I was a teenager and his dad had been to prison a few times. I used to go over and drink slash smoke weed with my friend and his brothers and sometimes his dad would hang out with us for a bit. One night when we were all drinking he decided to tell us all a story from his prison days. When he was close to being released he decided he wanted to do something nice to surprise his wife. So he cut his dong and put some balls underneath the skin and let it heal. With the idea that it would make sex better for her. Guess as a thank you for waiting for him and taking care of the kids while he was in prison. This was years later and he still has them in. The cartel cornered me because they thought I snitched on them for a cell phone. Dozens of eyes staring me with the intent to kill, until my ex Bunky, one of the leaders, came over and vouched that I was legit and never said a thing about the stuff he did. The guy they were really looking for checked into solitary the next day, and I was cool again. It wasn't something I saw so much as something I heard. Don't read if you have a weak stomach. This guy came in, very scary dude. He was openly a necrophiliac, the guy was doing time for desecration of a corpse. I was just a kid when this happened, so I was in the 18 to 24 year old block, known in many jails and prisons as the jungle. Kids in jail are young, curious, and refuse to believe anyone out there has seen or done worse than they have in general. So people started asking this guy questions, trying to call his bluff and get him to explain what he was really in for. He stuck to his story that he got caught ducking a corpse in a cemetery. So here's where shit got bad, they started asking questions and everyone realized he was dead serious, no pun intended. He explained to us that it's very simple to duck a dead female body. He said you simply dig the corpse up, lubricate the anus, puncture if necessary, and slide a curling iron inside for 5 to 7 minutes. He explained the vagina's close proximity to the anus caused this to warm the vagina up and make it feel lifelike. He said any scarring or burning to the anus didn't matter, as this was all about making her feel alive while you needed her and nothing else mattered. The utter matter-of-fact manner in which he explained it all coupled with his jacket papers showing what crime he was incarcerated for showing he was in for desecration of a corpse. No one asked him anything after that. No one messed with him or got in his way, not even groups of dudes ever messed with him. I saw some savage beatings, met some killers, armed robbers, truly scary, awful people. Nothing stuck with me like that, though. Twelve years later, I still think about that guy sometimes and get the creeps. I'd say it's the time I was out on the exercise yard in Durham prison standing against the fence talking to someone I know, in the middle was people walking round in a circle like normal. This guy steps out of the circling crowd and slashes the guy right next to me and steps back into the crowd, the guy looks at me and starts saying have I been slashed, have I been slashed honestly the side of his face was wide open, I thought I could see his teeth. I just exhaled and leaned back against the fence, pretending I'd saw nothing. Nothing else I could really do and I wasn't getting involved in whatever it was that was happening. Anyway the alarms went off and the screws pulled him out of the yard. Another thing that wasn't scary really, more shocking but has stayed with me was when I saw somebody hanging when I was in North Allerton Young Offenders. You had three landings, floors, on the induction wing, the bottom landing was used as the association where you went out for an hour a day and made phone calls and such. Anyway I'm waiting to use the phone and a cell alarm went off on the landing above. A screw went to the door and starts screaming for help and opens the door. In your pad you had like a shower board is the best I can describe it, that blocked off the view between the toilet and your double bunk, as I looked up I saw a lad hanging off it pretty much blue in the face. The screw is grabbing him by the legs and trying to keep him up and another screw runs in and cuts him down. Loads more screws turn up and they have him laid out on the landing doing CPR on him, they put what I can only describe as some sort of shoehorn down his throat, there's mumbling and they carry him off and I never saw him again. The prison was small so if he was alive I probably would have seen him again. Not really scary but messed up. Was locked up in Japan and there was a Korean guy who came in. You aren't allowed to talk at all, and when you talk to the guards it should be in Japanese. The whole place is silent basically. We're locked down except for 20 minutes to shave in an outside corridor, and brush teeth morning and night. Showers once in 5 days, timed 15 minutes unless it falls on a weekend or a public holiday in which case 24 hours lockdown. It messes with your head when you can't talk so some of us stood at the risk of getting ducked. This Korean guy couldn't speak a ducking word of Japanese so he was ducked. They brought in a translator who only spoke English and Japanese to try and talk to him but nothing happened. 
I spoke some basic Korean and whispered to him through the bars at the back to relax and stop talking but he kept going. The guards came up and told him in Japanese they were gonna beat him to death if he didn't shut up. He kept on trying to say things and they got a couple guys and forcefully dragged him to an solitary isolation cell with no windows or any entertainment whatsoever. We have no view of the isolation cell and he screamed cause it sounded like they were beating him. A Chinese inmate was frequently denied water, no tap in the cell, and abused verbally daily. He cried when I spoke to him in Chinese cause he hadn't heard it in forever. Not me, but this is a story that makes me shiver whenever I think of it. There's a guy who was in a large gang and went to jail many times between the age of 18 to his late 20s. He's in his 30s now and has changed, left the criminal underworld and now travels the country and holds lectures to teenagers about his life and how if you're involved with gangs, seek help to get out, don't ever go down that path. The first time he went to jail, at 18 years old, it was night and he was trying to sleep. There was a loud scream that woke everyone up. Both guards and other workers ran to the cell where the scream had come from, where one inmate had thrown a liter of boiling cooking oil that had been boiled at the highest temperature for over an hour on another inmate's face. A worker there panicked and didn't know what to do. So this woman took a wet cloth and put it on the man's face. When they tried to remove it, the man's skin and flesh just peeled off with it. Pretty much his entire nose was ripped off, along with parts of his cheeks, chin, an eyelid, etc. Just hearing about it is horrifying. He's still alive. Last that the guy who told the story heard, the man has had several surgeries to get his face fixed. It's still horribly disfigured. Not a prisoner, but a former prison guard. One of our corporals got stabbed over 30 times, with no one around to help. Blood spray had practically painted the office red. Amazingly, he survived, but never came back. Another officer got beat so bad he was unrecognizable, all for a stupid gang initiation. Only death during my time was a guy that was improperly restrained, in the dark, without a camera, and he choked to death because he was wearing too many clothes and had toilet paper in his nose, because he knew the cert, prison SWAT, team was coming to get him. My cousin at the mental health prison had some wild stories. A guy with his testicle on a spork, another would open his abdominal stitches and play with his own intestines. I could not imagine working there. I work in a county jail. One I worked at before was ducked. Saw a guy get his head slammed against the wall by other inmates until his skull cracked because he was the only white guy in an all-black pod. He survived but was still in the hospital after a brain bleed whenever I quit the jail. Another guy was stabbed in the eye with three pens tied together in his sleep. The guy who stabbed him was a 50-something-year-old white guy who did it to earn protection from a gang in the jail. One guy started popping off with the N-word one night so the inmates in with him tied him to a bunk. Cut off all his hair so rough he had gashes all over his head, pissed on him, beat him, and sodomized him for three days. Every time we came through to do a walk through they threw a blanket over him so it looked like he was just sleeping. He finally broke loose and ran to the door one night while we were doing medpass. One pod boss, unofficial leader of a pod, inmate who asserts himself as the alpha, was said to have forced anyone who challenged him for control of the pod, but we never could prove it. One guy swallowed a razor blade passed it without damaging his inside somehow, dug it out of his shit and slid his arm from his wrist up to the inside of his elbow. Only reason he lived according to EMS is because of tourniquets officers applied. One wounded so tight on him that it broke, second one worked. Mental inmate would fill his socks with his own shit and stomp around in it all day. Angry old man had the ability to bend over and projectile shit all over the walls of his cell whenever he got mad. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.